This is Kevin, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a client device in router mode. This is especially useful for mobile users that will be connecting to different hotspots all the time. In this guide, we assume you already know how to set up a static IP address on your PC or Mac. If you don't know how to do this, please check out our tutorials for setting a static IP. I'm already at the default IP address of 192.168.1.20, so I'm going to go ahead and log in using the default username and password of UBNT. The first thing we want to do is click on the Network tab. At the top of the page, using the drop-down box, we're going to change the network mode from Bridge to Router. Under WLAN Network Settings, we're going to change from Static IP to DHCP. This way, the, the access point that we connect to will automatically fill in all the settings required. The LAN Network Settings, we're going to set statically. We're going to change the IP address to 192.168.10.20. This will be the IP address that you access the Ubiquiti device from now on. The net mask is fine at the default of 255.255.255.0 and there's a checkbox next to enable NAT that we want to enable. We're also going to want to enable our DHCP server. This will open up some more boxes for range start and range end. This will be the IP addresses that get handed down to our computer. For the range start we're going to put in 192 dot one six eight dot ten dot one hundred and for the range end we're going to make this one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot two hundred the rest of the settings on this page are fine at the default values so we're going to go ahead and click the change button at the bottom of the page and now we're going to go ahead and apply these settings at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and change your computer back to obtain an IP address automatically or using DHCP if you're on a Mac. Uh, the device will no longer be accessible by the default of 192.168.1.20 because we changed the IP address to 192.168.10.20. So in the address bar, once you've set your computer back to obtain automatically, you're going to want to enter in 192.168.10.20 which will bring us back to the login page. Now we can navigate to the wireless tab. We want to leave the wireless mode in station and next to the SSID there's a select button. We'll push this select button which will bring up the site survey window. These are all the access points that are uh, in the area. You can click on the signal column and it'll put the strongest signal at the top of the page for you. So you're going to want to pay attention to the signal, and you're also going to want to pay attention to the encryption. You see, if it has WPA or WPA2, that's an encrypted network, and you need to know the password and have permission to access. So I'm looking down the list, and I see this has no encryption, and it has a nice strong signal, and I know I have permission to access this network, so I'm going to select that one, and then scroll down to the bottom of the window, and push the select button. Once again, all the rest of the settings on this page are fine at the default values, so all I need to do is click the Change button and the Apply button. Now it will be acquiring its IP address and all the information it needs to get on the internet from the AP that I just connected to. So we can go ahead and click on the Main tab. And now you can see I have a nice strong signal strength. You can see I'm connected to the access point. And if I click on DHCP client, you'll see I also got the IP address from the AP, NetMask, and Gateway, primary DNS. So I'm all set. Now if I travel to a new location and I want to connect to another access point, it's as simple as just navigating to the 192.168.10.20 address. You'll always be able to access the device from this IP. You just click on the wireless tab. Select the SSID, and then once again, you can just look for the new access point you want to connect to, paying attention to the signal strength and the encryption column. Just select the new access point you want to connect to, and then change and apply, and you're ready to go again. Hopefully, this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.